So um, I'm talking about Ember and OAuth, and in many ways this is kind of a tragedy, um, uh, and I'll get to that later. But so I'm, I'm Matthew Rudy, and um, um, this is my logo, but it's actually just an um, emoji, um, but I just changed the colours. Um, and I'm currently working on Chronicle in, in London, which is like a backbone front end and like a, a load of Ruby and potentially in the future we're going to move to like Go and like Cassandra or something. But um, we're basically a startup we're going to launch kind of next week. <laughs> um, and uh, um, we're always looking for, well, the they're always looking for developers. Um, so, so what are we trying to do with OAuth? And I think there's, there's sort of there's two things we want to want to achieve. One of those is like authenticating via a third party. It's the classic sign up or sign in with a third party because we don't want to handle passwords um, because passwords get leaked, right? Um, but we may also want to like obtain access to a third party API. Um, and that was actually what I was trying to achieve when I was um, working on this little project over Christmas. Um, so. The tool, which is of course OAuth2, OAuth um, has its own logo um, and has now a finalized uh, um, specification. But um, you've probably read about OAuth2, um, and particularly like the, uh, the road to hell, um, described by the former author of the, the standard who, who quit um, <laughs> a, a short while before it was published. Um, so, he has his, own, his I guess he, has, he explains his reasons for, for, for this disliking the standard as it turned out. And a lot of it was kind of um, like movement towards like, like corporate standards. But then at the same time, people have, say that it doesn't really match the standards the corporate, corporate world needs. Um, but actually, it, I, I think it's all right, um, at least for, for, for my purposes. And um, um, the spec is actually very readable. It's actually very simple. Um, and maybe, maybe that's the problem, is that it's too simple and it's too, there's too, way, too many ways to interpret it. Um, but, but fundamentally, it, it provides four different flows, or four different grant types, which are um, the authorization code, like the implicit grant, the resource owner password credentials grant, which is just like passwords, um, and the client credentials gr grant. And um, the spec like, has these very nice little... Uh, uh, flow diagrams, which um, um, if you don't know what the like, resource owner and the, um, like, the fact is basically like someone is giving us, someone is, is using a browser, um, we're redirecting them to GitHub and then they're signing in with GitHub and then it comes back and this is, this is the classic OAuth situation. Um, OAuth 2 versus OAuth 1, uh, it achieves the same thing, like there's specific things about, about security, and OAuth 2 particularly doesn't really provide any security, it's just, it says use HTTPS. Um, but like this is, oh, so, so, so and what actually happens is we get back um, parameters, which is an access, an, it's an OAuth code that we can then communicate via our secret on a server with GitHub who give us actual access token. So it's so important, this only works if you are a secure server um, because that's just how it works. And, um, but but as, as well as giving us a token to use GitHub, we're also basically authenticating their identity with GitHub, which is, which is, is, is the way that actually I use OAuth most of the time is like OmniAuth and I'm basically logging in. Um, and this, this, you kind of need, yeah, this is the only flow that really, really gets you that. But um, what, what I was actually excited about and what I wanted to play with was the implicit grant. Um, which in this case is uh, the client, as, as the spec describes, it could well be Ember because it doesn't require any secret conversation between the client and the server. Um, and in which case, like, we don't necessarily have to, we don't necessarily have to believe that the token works because um, the user is basically just trying to access GitHub. And if they have a valid token and GitHub's given it to them, then we can just use it. Um, but, but importantly, um, this actually uses the, the hash of, of the URL. And the reason is because um, we're trying to be secret um, f for the, it has a very strange name for this. They call it the, uh, the web hosted client resource. 
And importantly, in, 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 this, in this grant type, we're trying to keep um, the token secret from them. And I, I'm, I'm suggesting that we probably want to de deploy to S3. And but, um, um, the, the, way that, the way that browsers work is that um, hashes are not sent to the browser, so not sent to the server. But like Ember, Ember could definitely read this, and we could um, then just use that token straight away and like, access GitHub's API. Um, and the third type is, is password. Um, the password grant, which does what you expect. It's uh, user gives you a password, and you hit an API, and it just gives you back an access token, which we can use directly. Um, and the fourth one is like the client credentials grant that, uh, as far as I see it, it's basically for servers to communicate with servers that are both in each other's trust. Or well, I think you could also just see it, uh, sorry, uh, in the, like, uh, the Twitter app, the phone app, might use it to uh, use the, the client's authentication. Uh, sorry, that's used, I'm sorry, that was one before. Was the I think that's the passwords, it is. password it is. authentication. Yeah, it is, you're right. So it's, it's more administrative interfaces. Kind of thing. Yeah, from what, I've, from what I've seen, I can't. See, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really for like servers using OAuth as like a standard to communicate amongst themselves. Um, but so, so, so implicit grant flow is what you want to do, and um, there is thankfully an Ember OAuth two um, library that that implements this, and it's pretty pretty well maintained. Um, and the the config looks just like you would um, in like sort of a Rails app with um, um, OmniAuth. Um, we're just going to give out a client ID, and there is no secret. Like in in a, in a, in a server side, you'd always be giving a uh, a client secret, but there is no secret because we we can't trust the client. So, um, uh, um, and and importantly, like the, this whole thing is basically that like we have to create a state token that um, proves that when GitHub comes back to us, that is actually um, the request we made. Um, um, but importantly, like they actually open a. Th 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 the thing I don't like about this library is that it opens a new window, which inevitably causes like pop-up um, warnings and doesn't work unless you accept them. So um, then this actually, this, this works. Um, but you see the example is in GitHub, and there's a, there's a, um, a little trick here. <laughs> um, uh, so so just using this is just like initiating the off, off, and you'll get the pop-up warning, and um, ignore it, and eventually we'll get to. Oh, I went past. Um, um, and this, this is something, something like I, I think is quite cool is that GitHub is still not responsive. So if you have like a little window with a login form, it just, um, I think I even moved it in this example, but like it, it just doesn't look good. Like oh, oh, GitHub need to kind of sort out their, their, their responsive um, login forms. Um, but basically we get like a token, um, except uh, we don't because um, this actually isn't the implicit grant, even though we asked for it. Um, GitHub only actually supports the, uh, so we're expecting to see, well, we, we get like a, a parameter, but actually we're supposed to be getting like a, a token. So um, GitHub doesn't actually support the implicit grant and they don't, well, the documentation doesn't say they do, but I, I would hope that they'd just give me an error rather than looking like it was going to work. Um, so basically they, they seem to ignore the, uh, uh, the token type parameter. Um, so I spent ages like, looking at this and then realized it was a total waste of time. Um, but so GitHub actually says you should use passwords. So um, kind of ruins my, my, my whole plans. Um, so like the, 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 the TLDR is like pure client side of is pure poorly supported. Um, and from what I can work out, like Google does do it. Um, Facebook sound like they do it. Um, and there's probably other, other third parties, but like actually I want to I get GitHub. So, um, my only solution, if I want to stick to like a, a pure client-side approach, is to use passwords, which is what I didn't want to do. Um, but but I'm, I'm mostly like a Ruby developer, so um, I could just set up like a really simple OmniAuth server that just did this. So what about, about a hybrid approach? Um, so like so so, 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 so what, I, what I think is cool, and I have like written bits of code, but I haven't really finished it is, um, is, the authorizing is the authorization code flow, but like as an API and like, um, like Ember and Rails, I love each other, right? So um, uh, it's not gonna be a problem. So let's take the authorization code flow and let's stick, stick Ember in the middle of it between the server and, and the web browser. So the concept is basically this, like do what, so, so, so 
in building like client side apps with like like um, REST APIs, like we do this all the time. So like Ember should be like getting like an OAuth slash new root, which should return like a URL to redirect to, and then Ember can redirect the client, like storing state before it does, and then like get the callback. And because we now have query parameters, we can actually in an Ember root, we can eat that up and do something with it and send it back to the server with a post. Um, and I, I don't know if OAuth is the best path, but that's, that's what I'm thinking right now. Um, if anyone has a better solution for like the name of this route, then please, please let me know. Um, and then ultimately, we're going to pass that code and um, the state object as well, I think. Um, and we're going to end up getting like a JSON response that gives us the access token. And then we can do what we want to do. Um, so I, I gave it a big thumbs up. Um, so, like, so this is my hack together like version of it um, that probably doesn't work, um, but looks like it works. So, um, like, all we really want is just a, a simple like um, promise-based AJAX client that gets a new token. Well, it gets a request for a token, and then once we get the response, um, accepts it and gives us the, the GitHub access token. Um, now, there may be something that does this already, but it's so simple, it doesn't really need something else. Um, and thankfully, we can actually just do it in almost no code in Ember, given we have query parameters, um, because all we care about is that code, to the code value that comes back, the state value that comes back, and um, that's it, really. Um, so uh, it's easy, right? So basically, I, I, when, I, when, I, when I did this, I thought like I was going to build like some really cool like GitHub um, Ember app. But then I got sidetracked all the time by trying to work out like this, this whole OAuth thing. And then I realized it was a waste of time. So um, uh, thanks. <laughs> 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 Any questions? Why? <laughs> Why which bit? I, I, I mean, the end, you're, you're sort of using, trying to construct an API using a service. I don't know yeah. why not use the service to handle those requests for you as a proxy to the, to the Ember app. Why try to get the token to the Ember app? Um, well, so, 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 so what, what I want to do is um, build a, like, Ember interface for like Jekyll. Okay. So I want to basically like in the client, I want to be interacting with the GitHub API. So all I want is a token. Yeah. Um, and going by the server doesn't make any sense. Well, it does make sense, but it just wouldn't, it, it, it's just unnecessary. Um, so, so the way I have tried it before is either hosting the Ember app out of a Rails app and like setting a cookie, and that's the easy way. But like we're trying to, I'm trying to kill, we're trying to get rid of cookies, right? So, um, so that, that's the easy way is actually just use OmniAuth, um, set a cookie for domain, and then redirect back to the Ember app, yeah. and it would just work. Yeah. Um, but we try, I'm trying to avoid that. Um, and the other way that, that, that I do it, but my, my client does it right now, is that we have a separated Ember app and a separated like, API server. And what happens is that um, we do an OAuth request, and we, the callback URL actually is the API server. So GitHub goes back to the API server and then does, gets a token there and then redirects back to the Ember app, well, it's a Backbone app, um, with the auth token in the, in, the, the param, in, in the params. And that does work. But then, like, and we, are using, we are using URLs in a very similar way, but it's, it, it, I think it's an unnecessary step. And I, I like building APIs. So, um, so it suits me. Um, and it's, it's a valid question, but like for, for my purpose, I, I, what I just want is like an auth token in my Ember app, so I can like do cool stuff with Markdown. Yeah. Um, yeah. Understand. This is a question. Okay. Not, not a question, but <coughs> yeah, I ended up doing something similar. In that I've got an auth server that implements auth itself, so the Ember app authenticates with the auth server through implicit grant. And that also uh, authenticates with any of the other 
GitHub. Okay. So you log into the auth server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other app running off to that it doesn't care about where that's gone off and talked to. Or that's the other way to do that, it, yeah. So you, then you can just implement uh, and does it grant on the Ember app. So yeah, that's kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good qu ask question in your question, or is the, impl the implicit grant um, for that use case, I would have thought that would be a case where you'd use user credentials and that it would just be kind of the standard. More standard to well, with, with our app, you can log in with Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or username and password, and all that's kind of held on the um, the auth server. Yeah. And then we authenticate with that, get back an OAuth token, and that OAuth token we then use against our API server. And the API server and the auth server both talk to the same database, so that's all stored there. Uh, okay. But all the Ember app has to care about is the OAuth token at that point. I don't know if I've answered the different question. Yeah, well, it's probably a conversation for viewers. Uh, so uh, I do have a question. I'm not sure if it's a fair question, and it's sort of not really ember related, but it's co oh, related. Uh, and that is, um, you know, you, you brought up the fact that that, that library that's, that's being used, and I haven't seen it before, so I'll take a look. Um, it has this annoying kind of pop up uh, functionality. And, and, you know, the, the smoothness with which you can authenticate. You know, I've seen a few cases where it really works well, and when it works well, it's just a million times better. It's a fluid process. People are connecting services left and right, boom, boom, boom. Is there a way to avoid that? Is there a reason, technically, why, I mean, it would seem like this would be an obvious thing to change? You know? Yeah, I think the only reason is because, um, I haven't spoken to the author, but, like, I think it's probably because they're building apps that don't use um, push state. Okay. So, at that point, like if you're using like the hash for your, your routing, then using it also for for picking up the the, the, auth, the auth token may, maybe doesn't work. That's my, that's my only that's my only guess. Um, I haven't spoken to them. Um, but like so so, so actually, um, so I, I, I the way I approach writing talks is I always like, have this ambitious project that I start, and then I realize oh I should just build a, a smaller library, and then I realize I should stop doing that and do something else. And then I achieve none of it and just give a talk. Um, but, <laughs> um, but like, so, so, so but, but one of the, one of, so I tried lots of different apps, right? And one of them, I basically took, took that Ember OAuth 2 app um, client and just reused it using the, using the hash directly on the, the URL and, um, and it does work. So, so I, I, think, I think a simple pull request and an, an alternative flow for, for using that would, would be really simple. Um, because cause the library's already there. Like, um, Im importantly, it, it knows how to store um, like the token state, um, so the state, rather, the state object. So, so it can, and it already knows how to parse the parameters and such. So um, it, it, it would be fairly simple to do. Um, and I, 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 I suggest just, just doing a pull request on his project and giving two, two, different, um, two different approaches. Okay. Um, One more question. Do you think they're going to sort it out to the, the client side so OAuth that will work? For the GitHub? Yeah, for any of those services. Because it doesn't seem to be a priority. In my no, mind it, 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 it works It works in lots, it works in lots of cases. I, mean, yeah. it, it, I think you know, where you have, especially data that's not as um, confidential, it's a use, easier use case to, 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 to open up, you know, like Last.fm would support it, for instance. So you have, uh, Facebook definitely does. And, you know, you have, you have, there are definitely cases where the implicit grant works. And I think that uh, there would be an interesting use case where if you wanted to, your backend server, I mean, I think if you have a backend server, uh, you, you, you're probably considering having, you know, hold the secret there and you can do a lot more. Uh, at least they'll, they'll provide more services for you anyway. It might, might be more of a push real-time service than uh, request reply. But the, um, the interesting thing would be to have your client basically be a uh, forward cache. You, know, you just basically have it pull down a bunch of raw data, process that data, and then the interesting data that you care about gets sent back down to your REST server uh, to, to be stored there. But that would be, I mean, I, I've thought about doing that. I, I haven't had the time to have a pet project yet, so. Um, so I, 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 don't see, I don't see any 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 good reason why they haven't done it, apart from just it hasn't been a priority. Because, I mean, they already will give you a token if you give them a username and password, so why not? If you've like authenticated by their system directly, like and it's, it's more proof that you're you're the person. So, um, and you should raise an issue. May, maybe that's the answer. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. raise an issue on the on the yeah. GitHub yeah. API yeah. repository. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you.